What are we trying to do? Change the world. How are we going to change the world? Be, Be crazy, crazy enough, enough to, to think, think you, you can. can. Penguin Corp's agenda. Leader, Me Michael, calls meeting to the order. Two, Stu Karoff, introduce introduction and history. Three, Muhammad, activities and impact. Four, Chase, why do, why do a Linux club? Five, Joel, how to do a Linux club? All right, thank you very much. How are you guys doing this afternoon? Good. All right. Now, I've been doing Linux clubs at school for an extended period of time, and it's kind of become a big part of how I see the world and a big part of how I live. Now, this is the future is now, students as technologists. I'm Stu Karoff, and I'm a social studies and tech teacher at Aspen Academy, and I'm the founder of this club here called the Penguin Corps. I'm also the founder of the, uh, the Asian Penguins, which is the Linux club at Community School of Excellence in St. Paul. Now, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics says that by the year 2020, stop and think about that, that's just a few weeks away, 77% of all U.S. jobs will require some technology skills. Schools have their work cut out for them because a, uh, a kid that does not have access to technology at school may become an adult that lacks those skills and is unable to get a job as a result. According to uh, According to the U.S. Uh, Census Bureau, 89% of U.S. households have high-speed internet. The technology landscape has changed a fair amount. When you take a look at a number like that, you're thinking, well, great, that's almost everybody. However, as with many things, things like this are not always evenly distributed. If we take a look by income, 56% of low-income households have a computer, and only 53% have high-speed internet. Here's the correlation. If you can't afford it, you're less likely to have it. Now, let's take a look at Minnesota. Minnesota is notable for the fact that it has rather large, significant refugee populations. Uh, the two big examples would be the Hmong and the Somali communities. Now, with the Hmong, 28% of Hmong Americans live in poverty. For the Somali, it's an even higher number. We're talking about 54%, and that's compared to only 15% of all U.S. households. Now, for refugees, the correlation is still the same. You can't afford it, you're not going to have it. Now, of course, we want kids using tech, and we want kids learning these things. But no school in America has unlimited funds to meet these needs. And these are really daunting problems. But what if I told you that there is a solution? And that solution is scalable, doable, and affordable. What if I told you that the digital divide can be closed? What if I told you that kids like these can help to drive the solution rather than being recipients of the problem. And what if I told you that the solution can fit in the palm of your hand? This is a flash drive, and it contains Linux as the operating system that we use. As for the answers to those questions, well, I've been working on that the last nine years of my life, because I get to work with some really, really great students uh, doing these kind of things at school. This started at Community School of Excellence, and then it continued at Aspen Academy just within the last year. Now, first, Community School of Excellence. Their student population is mostly Hmong, with a mixture of Karenni uh, as part of their population. Most of their kids are refugees, or children of refugees, from Laos, Thailand, and Burma. 60% of their students are English language learners, and over 80% qualify for free or reduced price lunch. Now, on the surface, they look like a lot of schools in the metro. Not a very likely place for a technology revolution to happen. We didn't 
try to start a revolution, and we certainly didn't ask for one, but a revolution is exactly what we got. Because CNC is home to the Asian Penguins, that school's Linux computer club. The Asian Penguins were the first Linux club at a Minnesota school, and as of yet still the only Linux computer club at a mom school anywhere in the world. And these kids have been part of a unique experiment. The components of that experiment are really pretty simple. Get used computers, get open source software, have kids do the work, and then see what happens. The results of the experiment are in. This works. Having kids use Linux at school helps the kids, helps the school, helps the community. And I've gotten to be a witness to that for an extended period of time. Now, how did this begin? Well, back in 2011, CNC started its first one-to-one -one laptop program. And shortly into it, they ran into the same kind of problems that any school with a one-to-one problem, or one-to-one -one laptop setup has. Kids losing laptops, breaking laptops, etc. Well, I had a shortage of computers in my room, and I turned to a great nonprofit in Minneapolis called Free Geek Twin Cities, who set me up with some free desktop computers that came with Linux rather than Windows. They use Linux because, for their work because Linux is open source, free to get, free to use for any purpose, free to change, and free to give away. I was already a Linux user, so I thought that was pretty cool. Well. My students there loved the computers. And uh, they started coming to my room after school to use them. And they wouldn't leave. So I ended up starting a club out of that. From that, uh, this big thing started. The kids were all Asian. Mascot of Linux is a penguin. So we called it the Asian Penguins. But why use Linux at all? I mean, there are a few reasons other than the obvious one, that it's free. First, very few schools in the United States are using Linux. If you want to stand out, don't do what everyone else is doing. Now, schools are usually more comfortable in following rather than leading. Have you ever encountered that? Okay, trying to get them to show initiative rather than watch somebody else do it and then try to tag along? Yeah. But, Having Linux at our school gave our kids a unique learning experience that they weren't going to get anywhere else. But another reason for using Linux is the widespread adoption of it elsewhere. Just in case you didn't notice, it's everywhere. Linux runs the internet, Google, Facebook, Twitter, Android phones, self-driving cars, internet-connected crockpots, set-top boxes, and the list goes on. If our kids decide to go into tech for a career, they will need to know something about Linux. But the biggest reason for uh, using Linux was that it gave us an affordable way for students to become technology leaders. Our students became what I like to call partners in the process. The kids were learning how to install the apps, uh, configure the OS, run software updates, change computer parts, and just whatever we could think of. And the computers they were working on would then be used by other students. The kids who took part in the program could say, this is something we did. Starting in 2013, we took on what eventually became our biggest project, our school's digital divide. We had a lot of students that didn't have computers in their homes. We took old computers, we made them run like new. We began taking computers to students' homes and eventually started welcoming families to pick up their computers at school. Next slide. 2015, we needed to replace laptops in our middle school. Our school didn't have any money for it. The solution? Crowdfunding. We really did. We had, um, the Asian Pay was started a campaign called Operation Upgrade, complete with a YouTube video. When the campaign ended, we received enough money and donated computers to fill not just one laptop cart, but two. And yes, 
the kids did all the software work. Now the Asian Penguins grew into other activities and we attracted more students. In eight years, we had over 250 kids come through the program and we introduced hundreds more to Linux and open source software. In 2019, I changed schools and started work at Aspen Academy. Now, I've been telling people that any school can do this. This was my opportunity to test that theory that any school could have a Linux club. When I started the Asian Penguins, there was a great deal of making it up as we went along because we were creating something that didn't exist before. There was no template for us to follow. But at Aspen Academy, we did have a template. Mine. I knew what a Linux club could look like and what it could do because I'd done it. So I made my pitch to the administration. Aspen's leadership had never heard of Linux. But when I described what a Linux club could do for the kids and the school, they couldn't say yes fast enough. The big question was, will the kids be interested? If I build it, will they come? Well, this was my opportunity. I went for it. I started doing things I'd done at my last school. I invited kids. I showed my enthusiasm. I started trying to teach them little things. And since I had Linux computers in my classroom, I invited them to try it. And they liked what they saw. At Aspen Academy, extracurricular clubs meet in the after school program. And when we started on that first Wednesday afternoon in September, we had 14 kids who wanted to learn Linux. Club needs a name, right? After discussing alternatives, we settled on the Penguin Corps. I think the name communicates a sense of team and mission, and the kids picked up on that right away. We structured a program that would fit into the eight weeks of the school's after-school fall term. And the kids started doing many of the things that I taught elsewhere. What are the different hardware components and what do they do? How do you install the OS? How do you configure the apps and so on? And just like the kids at CSC, the kids at Aspen took to it like a duck takes to water. They learned, they grew, they got computers ready to use in class, they started giving computers away, they started teaching their friends, and they started making a difference. And they're just getting started. All from a pretty simple idea. Get kids using free software and see what happens. I'm now going to let the kids take over and tell our story and explain how and why this idea can work elsewhere. But before I go, I want to thank you for coming and hearing how we're trying to change the world one computer at a time. Thank you.